Nós hoje estamos aqui no Centro de Terapia Celular da, do Hemocentro de Ribeirão Preto e a Faculdade de Medicina de Ribeirão Preto da USP, que é um CEPID da FAPESP. E temos é, o prazer de contarmos com a presença dos membros do Conselho Consultivo Internacional do CTC, o Centro de Terapia Celular, é, professor Hans Kolb e a professora a Nancy Berliner. O professor Hans Kolb é da Universidade de Munique, da Alemanha, e a professora Nancy Berliner uh, do Hospital Brigham Women's, da Universidade de Harvard. E eles passaram dois dias conosco aqui em Ribeirão Preto para conhecer melhor o Centro de Terapia Celular e no da, nos dar é, informações e ideias, é, conselhos a respeito é, do funcionamento e do futuro do CTC. Então, uh, Professor uh, Kolb, thank you very much uh, for uh, coming here and having uh, this interview with us. So, what was your impression on the CTC, Center for Cell-Based Therapy? Well, I'm very impressed because there is a unique uh, setup of a large institute, Hemocentra, which is not only science, it's also practical, you know, it's uh, blood transfusion and production of cells, and an excellent uh, clinic hospital to use these uh, cells to f cure patients or treat diseases. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. And Professor Berliner, what was your uh, impression on the center? Well, I have to agree with Dr. Kolb. Um, I thought it was a very impressive uh, collection of, of projects and people who are clearly uh, pursuing excellence in basic science, preclinical work, clinical work, and education, which is a model for how we like to see medical centers operate. And uh, I thought that the programs were extraordinary um, mm -hmm. and that uh, it's really a great model of a truly integrated program. Mm -hmm. For the training of a hematologist uh, for the country in Brazil, what was your impression in terms of how, how the center contributes to, uh, to forming new and training new hematologists? I thought the education program was actually one of the highlights of, of the visit. I think mm -hmm. it's terrific that you've identified that you need to have education of young people start early on and that for the last 10 years you've had this program that starts in the middle school and you actually have people now who've gone all the way through it and are pursuing mm -hmm. PhDs here. I think that's fantastic. And we actually enjoyed, in, during the visit, we mostly heard when we went around to the posters and heard about the projects, heard from trainees, all of whom seem extremely engaged who spoke very well and clearly about what they were doing and are clearly uh, highly accomplished. And I think also from, from what I learned here, it looks like close to 10% of the hematologists in Brazil trained in this center. So I think uh, it is truly an extraordinary educational institution. Okay. And Professor Colbin, what, what do you think is the impact of the bone marrow transplant unit? Uh, in terms of uh, new therapies and uh, contributing to uh, transplant in the country? Well, there are several topics which are new and which are introduced in this center and I can only uh, spell out of the diabetes program, of the program with systemic sclerosis for autoimmune diseases, but also for sickle cell anemia and I think it's a great success to have now uh, the possibility to treat these patients from very, very bad diseases and uh, cure them and get them off to the, the pain and all the problems of sickle cell uh, disease. Mm -hmm. So any suggestions or tips for the investigators at the center for the near future or the longer future? Uh, well, it, it, it's obviously that they did a perfect job <laughs> <laughs> and they should continue. I think they are the, the, the center is or the focus is on stem cells mm -hmm. and as there are uh, researchers here who have uh, experience on the diseases of stem cells, we should really uh, follow them uh, how they will uh, 
uh, research into stem cell physio pathophysiology, physiology, but also the use of it. And uh, for example, the mesenchymal stem cells is an, uh, a very good example which can still be continued. Mm -hmm. Dr. Berliner, any mm -hmm. uh, suggestions on in terms of how the researchers should uh, continue their uh, research enterprise for in, for the next years? Well, I actually um, I don't have any over, uh, overarching recommendations. I was struck by the fact that it appears to be a very collaborative and collegial uh, scientific enterprise. Uh, there are always minor uh, tweaks that you can suggest for one project or another, but I think mostly the concentration should be on on expanding the degree to which the projects feed on one another and the interactions between collaborating PIs can improve the rate at which progress is made. Okay. Well, thank you both very much for first coming here and second for this uh, interview. Our pleasure.